All right, so the first row there, we're converting from radians to degrees. This should have gone pretty fast. We know pi is 180. So what's 180 divided by 3, everybody? 60. What was 180 divided by 6? 30. And then 180 divided by 4? 45. We will do one more. This is 45 times 7. So what I like to think of is, okay, well, what would, um, just do what you know. Like if I had four 45s, what would that be? 180. And so if I added on another one, we'd be the 225. Another one's 270. So what would seven of them be? 315, yeah. So you'll finish those for homework. Don't do it now. Just wait. Okay, the other thing we started talking about just a minute ago is how can we quickly go from degrees to radians. And here's the way that I think goes the quickest that I've found. First of all, think of the reference angle. How far away is it from 180? How far away is 150 from 180? 30. So I'm going to jot that down, 30. What's another name for 30? Pi over 6. So I know this is going to have to be 30 times something, because the reference angle is always going to be within the angle. So 30 times what is 150? 5. So 5 pi over 6. We'll do one more. Let's go down here. 300. How far away is it from the x-axis? Because that's the reference angle. 60 away, because we do either the 180, the 0, or the 360. So that's going to be a 60 degree reference. What's 60? Pi over 3, good. And then 60 times what's 300? 5, so that's 5 pi over 3. Okay, so then for homework, you'll finish these, and then I'd also like you to fill this in real quick, too. Let's go to the next page. All right, so Catoa, that's just to help us remember the trig ratios. Um, as far as doing this, though, let's look at this angle here, theta. So if I label this, here's my theta, here's my right angle, this would be adjacent, this would be opposite, and this would be hypotenuse. Theta always has to be at the origin. Over here, here's my theta. This is going to be the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. This is adjacent, and this is opposite. So looking at this triangle then, what is this point right here? Is this an x value or a y value, that 3? x. So this is going to be an x value. And then this is going to be what? Y value. And then the hypotenuse, if I were to create a circle, that hypotenuse would be the same thing as the radius. So the hypotenuse is always the radius. The adjacent is always the x. The opposite is always the y. And that's where trig all starts. So you're just supposed to go down through here and write these in terms of OA and H and also in terms of X, Y, and R. So we'll just do one of these. Let's do this one. This is the reciprocal of cosine. So if I look at cosine, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Don't write that down. So this is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So what's the same thing as hypotenuse over adjacent? R over X. And you guys will go and fill in the rest. All right. With 45, 45, 90 triangles, you have to remember every one of these goes 1, 1, radical 2. Or a million, a million, a million, radical 2. It always goes in that ratio for every 45, 45, 90. Over here, it goes 1 across from the 30, radical 3 across from the 60, across from the 90 is 2. So what if I call this 8? Then what's this going to be? And then what's this going to be? So if I used, and I wanted to find the sine of 30, and I did opposite over hypotenuse, what would I get for the sine of 30 if I did opposite over hypotenuse? What's 8 over 16? And see how it would be 1 half if I use those other numbers? That's the whole reason trig works, is because it's based off of similar triangles. All right. See how quickly you can do these. Put them in degrees.
should be finished. One, five times 30, what is it? Two, four times 60? Three times 45? 135, I think those are tougher, don't you? Like it's hard to think three times 45, but what I do is I think two 45s are 90, and then I add 90 and 45 is 135. And then what was this one? 330, right? Okay, so these you're going to do on your own. Let's go over here. All right, so here's to see if you can remember what I just said. With a 30, a 60, and a 90, label the sides. And with a 45, a 45, and a 90, label the sides. We're going to just let this be one and this be one and one. All right, so what goes across from the 60 if that's a one? Radical three, right? And across from the 90? And over here, if I have one, one, what's this? Radical two. Okay, we're not going to redo this. We just said it a minute ago. We're going to come down here. So we're trying to find the sine of 330 degrees. Some of you memorize the unit circle. Awesome. Use it if you have it memorized. If you don't, you have to have another way to do it. This is the older way of doing it, but it'll work every time. Find your reference angle. How far away is this from 360? 30 degrees is my reference. So now I'm going to draw a picture. So I've got 90, 180, 270. Here's 330. My reference angle is 30. Across from the 30s, 1. Across from the 60s, radical 3. Across from the 90s, 2. This right here is in the negative direction for y. So my sine of 30, 330, is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, negative 1 half. Right? All right, let's do one a little bit tougher now. Let's go down here to f the secant of 2 pi over 3. All of us prefer to think in degrees. So what's pi over 3? 60 times 2, 120. Which quadrant? Second. Reference angle? 60. So this is radical 3. This is 1. This is 2. What's going to be negative there in the second quadrant, x, y, or r? x. r is always positive. And so now if I'm doing secant, I have to think that's a reciprocal of cosine. So this is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent, or r over x, whichever way I want to think of it. And so what's that going to be then? Negative 2. And let's say I have my calculator sitting there, and I want to check it. Just to re remember how to use the calculator here. Here's what I can do. I know you probably don't have it with you, but just watch. So first thing I do is I check my mode. I have to be in radians. To do secant, I would have to do 1 divided by the cosine of 2 pi over 3. And it'll tell me the answer is negative 2. All right? On our next quiz, you will be allowed to use your calculator, but all answers have to be exact. What does that mean when I say exact? If I ask you for the sine of 60 degrees, can you think of this, the exact answer for the sine of 60 degrees? In fraction form, and also, can you think of the sine of 60? Let's go back up here. If I ask you for the sine of 60 degrees, you'd have to do opposite over hypotenuse. So what is the exact answer for the sine of 60 degrees? Radical 3 over 2. But watch if I do this. The sine of 60, i got to change my mode to degrees. I almost forgot. The sine of 60 degrees, it gives me this answer. What did we say the answer should be? Radical 3 over 2. Ah, oh, I can use my calculator to check, right? But this answer, radical 3 over 2, that's exact. Why is this not exact, even if you wrote all those numbers out? Why is it still not exact? It's a special type of number, radical 3. You may know? Irrational. Irrational numbers go on forever. They never stop. 
They never repeat. Okay. So let's go down here now. Quadrantal angles. How do we work with them? Well, if I want to know, I'm sure I'm going to do a separate one because I want you guys to do those too. Let's do the cosecant of pi over 2. So what's another name for pi over 2? 90. So I'm going to go to 90 degrees. And I'm going to say that the radius of this circle is 1. If the radius of this circle is 1, what would that point be then? It's not 0, 0. This point 0, 0. But what would that point be? 0, 0, 1. Good. And so then I'd have to say this is x, this is y, this is r. I have to think back to what cosecant is. What's cosecant again? R over, is it R over X or R over Y? Let's go back up here. Remember how sine was opposite over hypotenuse, which was, so that what's cosecant again? R over Y. So now what's our R? 1 and our Y is 1. So what's it going to be? 1. Okay, and then if I wanted to check it, I could check my mode, make sure I'm in radians, and I can do 1 divided by the sine of pi over 2. Not that you'll have time to check these on the quiz. you got to go kind of fast. That's 1. Okay? All right. And then I'm just going to do one of these. Let's go ahead and do this one together. An angle theta passes through the point negative 3, negative 4. So I'm going to draw that. Negative 3, negative 4. That's here. So this would be negative 3. This would be negative 4. And so my theta always has to be by the origin. We always draw that to the x-axis, never the y, always the x. So if we're trying to find the sine of theta, I always go back to opposite over hypotenuse here. What's how do I do this, though? Opposite over hypotenuse. We need to know what the hypotenuse is, don't we? Does anybody know it? Five. Five, yeah. It's a Pythagorean triple. So that's five. Okay, so what is the sign of theta, then? Yeah. And the cosine of theta? What's it going to be? All right. And the tangent of theta. All right. Could I actually find out what that angle theta was if I needed to? Yeah, I could. How would you find out 5 if you didn't know it was just that? How would we, guys? How would we figure out 5? Yeah. All right. <laughs> And that's it. So all you guys have to do are fill in anything that we didn't fill in. Okay?